Hey guys, Kevin here, and in this video, we're gonna start covering the three basic forms of Tang Su Do, the Qi Cho Hyang. So in this video, we're gonna talk about basic form number one, Qi Cho Hyang Ilbu. Okay, before we get started, let's talk about a little bit of the history. Um, most often, Grandmaster Huang Qi is credited with creating the Qi Cho Hyang, which is not accurate. The Qi Cho Hyang are also known in Japanese karate as the Taikyoku Kara. These were created by Yoshitaka Funokoshi, which was the son of Shotokan karate founder Gichin Funokoshi. He created these three uh, forms, which we know in Tang Sudo as the, the Pian Hyangs. So, he created these and they were adopted by other styles as well. You also see them in Kyokushin. They were also adopted by uh, Tang Suro. They were adopted by the original older styles of Chengdo Kwan, Taekwondo as well. They're seen in other styles from other countries. So they're not exclusive to Tang Suro and they were not created by Grandmaster Huang Qi. They were adopted into the system by him. They were created by Grandmaster Funokoshi's son, uh, in Japan. Let's take a look at the pattern or the embusen because this is going to be the embusen used in all three of the Qi Cho Hyang forms. So when you see the uh, embusen, the pattern, it is a capital I. Some people know them as an H form and they turn it on its side. But this is the embusen. I, they are also called the I forms because the form starts at the bottom you go across the bottom, up the middle, across the top, back to the center, down the center line, and finish off going through the bottom again. This is the same embusen used for all of the Kicho Hyang. Okay, before we get started and get into the actual form, I want to make it very clear that just because these are the most basic forms and they really aren't that difficult to learn, um, they are the foundation for every m more advanced form that follows after this. Pay attention to developing good sound basics now when you're starting out practicing these Qi Cho Hyungs. This is your foundation. Proper footwork, proper movement, proper body mechanics. These are all developed right here, right now with these very first three basic forms. The foundation you build now is what all the other more advanced forms are going to be built upon. So be sure you don't just glaze over it, rush through it, and move on to the next form. We're going to touch on details when we're going through the actual form, but I want to emphasize and make sure that you take these forms just as seriously as the black belt forms. Because again, this is your foundation and a solid foundation will carry you not only through your art in time in Tang Sudo, but if you go to study other arts as well, the foundation you build now will make learning those other systems and those other arts easier. So now let's get into the form. Okay, basic form number one, Kicho Hyung Ilbu. This is the very first form. And right off the bat, the most critical thing that I see in most Tang Sudo videos online, um, and even at tournaments and other classes I've gone to, is very robotic movement and I've seen them in instructional videos. I don't know where this started from, but you'll see movement where instead of moving smoothly, the student will step like a robot. Very mechanical, and I'm not even exaggerating. I wanna encourage you guys to move and glide as you move. You're, you're practicing a form of combat. You shouldn't be moving like a robot stomping or anything else. You should be moving smoothly with balance, grace, form, and power. All right, keeping my cord out of the way so I don't trip on nothing or break the camera. Let's go through Kicho Hyung Ilbu. Starting with position of attention, you're going to bow. Jumbi, hands come up, down either side of your belt knot, one fist apart, one fist away from your belt. From here, your first movement is to the left. You're going to look, low block, stepping into your front stance. Now, from here, when you step forward, you're going to glide. You're not going to pick your foot up and stomp. 
you're not going to raise and lower your center of gravity. I cover all this in my video on proper movement in the stances. You can see these principles there. I go into them in detail. However, from here, you're going to glide, sliding your foot in a semicircular motion, bringing your foot toward your other, your lead leg, and then out to shoulder width again, executing your center punch. So it's low block, center punch. Look over your shoulder, going back the other way. You're going to turn all the way around to your right. Low block, right foot forward. Step forward, center punch. Now you're going to the middle, looking in the direction you're gonna be going, stepping to the center, low block. Now, three center punches up the middle. One, two, three. Here is the key op. From here, on your third punch, you're gonna key up. From here, you're going to go all the way around you're going to your right as you're facing, but you're going to turn all the way around to your left. So I'm gonna look and I'm going to take my left foot, pivoting all the way around to my left. So that now I'm going in this direction, low block. Step forward, center punch. Now from here, I'm going back the other way, over my right shoulder, stepping, low block center punch now i'm heading back i've done the bottom of the eye i've went up the middle i've completed the top of the eye now i'm going back down the middle and finishing off the bottom again so now i'm heading back to the middle looking to the left low block making sure my cord's not in the way okay now Again, three center punches down the middle. One, two, three. Okay, turning all the way around to my left. I'm going this way. From here, all the way around to my left. Low block. Step forward, center punch. Back the other way. Low block and finish off the bottom center punch. From here, baro. Back to Jim B. Show. Rest. Come to attention. Bow. Okay, so there are 20 movements in this form. You're going low block punch. So it's one, two, three, four, five to the middle, three punches up the middle, six, seven, eight. Low block punch, nine, 10. Low block punch, 11, 12. Back to the middle, 13. Three punches coming down the middle. 14, 15, 16, going to the left, low block punch, 17, 18, and the last two techniques, low block punch, finishing off the eye, 19 and 20. 20 techniques. Again, focus on proper foot movement. Do not raise and lower your center of gravity. And especially if you're, I mean, training on outside, I love training outside. I encourage you all to work out and train outside, depending on your weather. Um, because it's more realistic. Now it's a lot easier and a lot smoother when you're doing it in a dojang on a smooth floor, whether it's hardwood or mats, and you don't have like the ups and downs of the ground. Um, my yard here is not totally flat, so I kind of have to adjust a little bit um, for the dips and all that. But when you're doing your forms, try not to raise and lower your center of gravity, try to flow Try to glide, do not raise and lower, do not stomp, do not come up and lower your center of gravity. You know, where you're, you're kind of like stomping through your form and to me it just looks very sloppy. And to me, I love the art of Tang Sudo. I'm trying to raise the standards in the art of Tang Sudo. Um, it's just the way I was taught from the very beginning in Korea and I want to pass all these things on to you guys. So now let's just take one last look at Kicho Hyung Ilbu.
If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe because there'll be a lot more coming forward. And when you do subscribe, be sure to hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time new videos come up. You can also head over to my website at kevinwpatella.com and catch out the blog. I also have a podcast coming to kind of take the place of the written articles because while the fitness and the martial arts is very visual, and with technique and form, you want to see videos for that. The application of the martial arts in your daily life is a mental and spiritual thing. And I know you all are busy. You have tight schedules. You have kids, work, and you may not be able to sit down and actually read a written article. So I am thinking about going forward with a podcast to discuss the mental and spiritual side of the martial arts as well as how to apply them in your daily life because it's not about just being a warrior on the street or in the ring or in the dojang it's about being a warrior in life so again if you found this useful please share it please share it post it on your social media share it with fellow students or others interested in the martial arts be sure to subscribe and we will see you next week when we cover basic form number two kijo hyung ibu